What's going on there, guys? We back with another one. Today, we got to talk about Steven Jackson doing the same thing to Isaiah Thomas that he did to Kwame Brown. And it was so subtle, but I want you guys to pay attention to what he did. You know, as far as the Kwame Brown incident, I'm going to show that again. But just a brief recap. Uh, he was they were interviewing Gilbert Arenas and Stack was saying like, Matt Barnes said, you know, that's the best number one pick he ever seen. And then he kept saying it over and over, trying to be funny. It's like, it's like if you're chilling with one of your friends, they'd be like, that go your boy, your boy over there. And they really saying somebody you can't stand is over there, but they trying to be funny about it, saying that's your boy. And that's the same type of energy it is, you know what I'm saying? When he said that um, Kwame was one of the best picks ever. And Gilbert, Gilbert, you know, he actually said at that time, he said he could have been, and it goes on to say he could have been like an AD if he wasn't, you know, under Michael Jordan at that time. He did something similar to Isaiah Thomas, man. And it's not cool because Isaiah Thomas put his neck out there for Stack at a time where Stack's NBA career was in limbo. And I don't want to say antics, but because of some of the behaviors he was exhibiting off of the court and on the court, quite frankly, you know, they were some of the behaviors he was exhibiting on the court and off the court. He was almost out the league for some of the behaviors he was exhibiting on and off the court. And Zeke spoke up for him, man. I'm going to show you these clips and I'll be back with my commentary. Check it out. Into, you know, I remember Kwame Brown's there, so he's the franchise. First pick. Yeah, he's a, he's a franchise. You know, yeah, um, Matt, Matt was just talking the, uh, the previous show we just had how good uh, Kwame was. Y'all killed a man. Nah, no, I didn't say nothing Matt, about Matt, it. Matt was like, that was one of the you know top number one picks they could ever, ever round, right? Yo, See, here you go. I'm just saying that. what Matt, Matt said this shit. <laughs> Matt, I had so, nothing to say. Matt didn't say shit. Yeah, Matt, said, so, Matt said Kwame was one of the coldest, <laughs> one of the number, best number one picks ever of all time. He could have been. He could have He could have been. <laughs> don't know why I like Isaiah on the one. I don't know what's up with Isaiah. <laughs> Just too sneaky, you know. He, he always think he ain't. He, I ain't do it, but he did it. You know. Like, we got we, we got you on camera. You did I got it. Got you on camera. <laughs> got you on camera. He still want to be Mike. Mike do not want to be your friend, Isaiah. I'm telling you for the fifth time. He do not want to be your friend. Mm. You know. Stay on ESPN. Keep talking on TNT. Mm. Oh, Mike should. You know. Now you're trying to say everybody better than Mike. It's okay. You not better than Mike. <laughs> he came to your city and took your city. That's why you really mad. He took over Chicago. I know. So. Jack, you should tell him the one about when you when you almost got ran out of this league. Where we at? In Indy? And yeah. Remember that call you made to me? And I called oh. the commissioner up. Man, I forgot about that. Jack, you was out. I was done. You was done. You was done. I was done so many times, but y'all remember that. And <laughs> and you you said So it's a few things, man. One thing I find very alarming is Steven Jackson saying that he forgot about something like that. That's one of the biggest things that can happen in your life. Uh, your career could have ended how many years would that have been? That would have been like six or seven years before his career actually ended, right? Because he did a whole stint in Charlotte after that not sure where else he played but that you know that extended his career tremendously to get past what happened in indiana and zeke stuck his neck out there for you so there should be certain things that are just off limits for zeke you have a podcast you have a platform let your guests tell their story but laughing in a way and there's different types of laughter so that laughter right there sounds like that's something you and Oakley have talked about in private. I could be wrong, but there's different types of laughs, you know, and that one, the way he was laughing hysterically, either you feel like that and the picture he was painting for everybody, Oakley at the time was that I'm just this big hater and you were co-signing that with your laughter. I didn't even hear Matt Barnes, but you couldn't even hold it together when he started going in and when he would say more and more the laughter would intensify that much more and so i felt like that was a bad move considering the things zeke has done for you i mean keep it professional uh, at the same time 
you know, that man, what he was able to do to help you extend your career, whatever it was, it was such a blessing in your life. I don't feel like he should have been your target like that. And that's why I say Kwame felt like, you know, you and him were all right until you did that on the show with Matt Barnes, you know, trying to get him to say something about Kwame in a negative light, but acting like, you know, you, cause I could see your, your facial mannerisms and you was looking at them like, you know, when you said best number one of all time, just saying it in that way, inflecting your voice like that, it was, it, it had so much sarcasm in it. And these are people that thought they were okay with you. So you blindside them like that. But really, man, the Zeke thing, the fact that you said you forgot about something like that is something in life that seems to happen to all of us, whether on a grander scale or a smaller scale. It's amazing what people forget you did for them. You know, you when you remind them, they be like, oh, I forgot you did that. And it's like this huge thing you've done for the person. You know what I'm saying? But they quick to be in them same rooms and, and same hangout spots where your name is being slandered. That's why I don't have no big crowd around me no more. You know, people will say anything about you. They'll they'll whatever's popular amongst a group of people they'll assimilate themselves to that and they won't give no pushback they don't mind i mean they they don't have no desire to have an unpopular opinion sometimes and i ain't talking about just being a contrarian just to say hey i'm a contrarian but if it's something you really don't believe or go along with you need to speak up and if you can't be around that crowd at that time it is what it is you know, I stacked the way he was rolling. And, and I know he's got a relationship with Oakley, you know, with the big three and everything. They actually almost fought out there during the game. But I just thought that was uncalled for. I think what Zeke did for him is far too great to ever for, for him to ever be a joke. And, you know, he comes on your podcast. I remember them talking about certain people acting funny style, not wanting to come on their podcast and Zeke, you know, he comes up and shares his stories, NBA legend and everything. So to laugh at Oakley saying that Jordan don't want to be Zeke friend, and you find that so funny. Jordan hasn't been up there, but Zeke is willing to come up there. So, man, look, I could keep talking about this, but I'm going to let y'all have it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace. <music>